Qubyte Interactive, the Brazilian publisher and developer, has been doing amazing work bringing old and obscure beaten apps to the limelight. Not only some of the games are largely unknown to most players, but some of them weren't even released here in the West and, while the quality of some games are in no way near the best of what the 16-bit zero had to offer, they are a piece of history that deserves to be preserved and, in that matter, Qbyte is killing it. But before I forget, hi, I am Savino, and this is The Flying Kick. Gourmet Santai Bara Yaru, pardon my Japanese, or Gourmet Warriors, was a late release in the Super Nintendo era, released on September 29, 1995 in Japan. The game was never released here in the West and honestly, it's very understandable. Not only the Super Nintendo was losing steam for the PlayStation, Saturn and the upcoming Nintendo 64, but Gourmet Warriors was not really Western material at the time. The weird enemy scenarios and characters weren't really something that developers and publishers were keen to try around these parts, fearing wasting money on something that we weren't ready for. And, since I always start my review with the story, let's do this. And yeah, that's the story. Two lines that make little to no sense. I mean, not that 16 beaten apps need to be nominated to the Oscars for its story, but come on. Even Double Dragon 1 on the arcade had something more substantial and coherent than that. <laughs> But, you know what, while it may sound I'm complaining, in the end, this is part of the charm of these old games, those short stories that were good only to give you a little contest about what's going on and that's it. Although here things are a little more weirder than usual. Graphically, Gourmet Warriors is amazing. You must have noticed by now how everything looks sharp in this game, from the characters to the enemies passing through the backgrounds, this is probably one of the best looking beaten apps on the SNES. The backgrounds are amazing, with some cool parallax effects and lots, lots of details. There is even a level where the floor is made of glass that looks fantastic. Honestly, too bad this game is so short because I would love to see two or three more levels to see what else these guys would come up with. The enemies? Well, take a look at them yourself. Are the most weird types you can find in a game. While the variety is short and they will repeat a lot on all levels, they are fun to fight against and some may have a surprise or two for you. The animation here is also very good. Enemies and characters move smoothly, for the time that is, the attacks are cool to see, especially the special ones, and you still can flex your character as you wish with some very smooth transition between the poses. Check it out. When it comes to the OST, Gourmet Warriors is a little… is a little… well, it's weird. While the music per se is excellent, some of the tunes really do not have a place in the beaten up genre. They are too suave and melodic with calm and soothing rhythms that really feel out of place here and yet, the tunes are so good that you won't complain about some of the odd ones. But sure, there are some great tunes here too that will surely rival some of the best tunes on the Super Nintendo. Check out some of them.
While the OST is pretty good, the sound effects are just there. There's not much impact in the punches and kicks you lay around. You will also hear some screams and grunts here and there, but nothing that will rock your world or bother you. They are there, do the role, and that's it. Now let's talk about what really matters here, the gameplay and combat. In Gourmet Warriors you will have three characters to pick, Bonjour, Mademoiselle and Très Bien. So good day, lady and very good in French. Why do they have these names? I mean, why not? Another thing that you must know is that Gourmet Warriors is not your typical beaten up and I'm not talking only about the characters names. Here you will have your typical buttons like an attack, a jump, a flex button, wait a what? Yeah, you have a flex button. A button exclusively for your characters to flex their muscles and other things. That has basically no real function aside of knocking enemies down without taking life from them. You also have two command buttons that I will explain in a bit. In Gourmet Warriors, your basic attacks and combos have little use. While you can beat your enemies with them, you will have a lot of trouble, especially with the bosses. To have any real chance to beat this game, you will have to use your special grabs to finish them with ease, and I mean it. You see, here in this game, you have stun levels. As you beat down your enemies, small stars or whatever this is will appear over their heads. These stars indicate the level of stunning your enemy currently is and for how long you can hold them down. After holding them, you can beat them up as it is with all games, but here things will be a little different. For starters, every character will act differently when holding an enemy. Bonjour, for example, throws the enemy away from him while Mademoiselle throws the enemy up, making him land upside down. You can also press R three times to throw the enemies on the corner of the screen, where they will bounce and return to you. At this point, you can punch them with a fiery strike that will give them extra damage. If you press L, R, L after grabbing them, you will perform a special throw that varies with the character you're playing with and if you press the same inputs but right at the moment you grab the enemy, you unleash your more powerful move. You could call this a special move but it's weird because they don't consume your life nor do you have a special bar and yet they are extremely powerful moves. The first boss, for example, can die easily with three or four of those moves. You can also throw your enemies pressing attack four times up and jump, so they will land upside down and you can jump over them to flex a little bit and humiliate your enemy even more. One thing that's pretty fun in this game is that from time to time a weird character will appear on the level with a lamp over its head. If you beat him, he will drop an item that can give you a lot of health and spawn a clone of your character to help you out. And help is a really strong word here for a couple of reasons. First, your clone can hit you, and sometimes it will hit you a lot. And the second is that the clone isn't the smartest AI around. It will beat some enemies for you, but it will take its sweet, sweet time sometimes, making you lose a lot of time if you don't take the lead and beat both of them. Another thing that you find in this game is food. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, er, uh, Savino, every beaten up has food, have you hit your head or something? Yes, many times, but that's not the point here. The point is, the food you will find in this game are actually ingredients that you will not replenish your health when you collect them. To use them, you will have to beat the boss of the level and take part in a small gourmet mini game, hence the name of the game. In this minigame, you have a list of all ingredients that you found in the previous levels, and you have to pick two from the list so the cooking bot can prepare it for you. It's really a trial and error game. Some combinations can give you a lot of health, some can give you squat, and some can even take life from you, so quick save and quick load will be your best friend here until you learn which ones are the best combinations. In my experience, tofu and any meat is a good one, and here's a tip for you. Always pick the meat as a secondary item. It usually gives the best results. 
Gourmet Warriors is a short game having only four levels and a final stage with only the last boss. It will take you around 25 to 30 minutes to beat and there are no extra modes or anything, but that was the usual back then. Now talking about the emulation, things are... Yeah, could have been better. While there's nothing wrong with the emulation per se, the game runs great and the sounds are perfectly rendered, there are some weird decisions here. First, honestly, it took me a while to start the game because you have to push up on this screen to select play game, which honestly looks more like a title than a button to press. I mean, it's more complaint, but I think these things should be more straightforward. Another thing that's missing here and I have no idea why is the L and R buttons in the option menu. This is super weird because in the original you have the option to change them, but here, if you don't know the game, it would be impossible to learn that they have any function in the game. Another thing weird is that L and R buttons here are backwards. It took me a few moments to notice that and I thought there was something wrong with the ROM because I wasn't able to pull a single move until I noticed that. At the end of the day, Gourmet Warrior is an excellent game from the 16-bit era. While the game is short and the enemy variety is lacking, the game is absurdly fun and the challenge is very approachable in the normal difficulty. This is in no way a match for the greatest names like Final Fight or Streets of Rage, but honestly, this is an amazing game that we really missed back in the day. Different enough to stand out, weird enough to make you laugh and with a challenge that won't make you throw your controller on the screen. For 5 bucks, this is an easy recommendation from me. Gourmet Warriors will be available for Nintendo Switch, PlayStation and Xbox on August 31st. And that's it for the review folks, I hope you enjoyed it and if so, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I will be back on the 28th with a review of a new Power Rangers fun game that honestly is worth a look. Other than that, I hope you all have an awesome day and remember. Keep it up.